You are listening to the Winners Ways Podcast with Bola Halabi, episode 100. Would you like to win and achieve success in what you do? Welcome to the Winners Ways Podcast, where we create winners every day. And now, your host, the author of Winners Ways book and life coach, Bola Alabi. Hey, what's up, everyone? Uh, welcome to another episode of the Winners Ways podcast. This is where we talk about your career, your money, of course, and we give you the life motivation to help you to live your life to the fullest. Guys, I'm so excited about today's episode because guess what? We eat episode 100. So, as always, I want to thank all my listeners um, for always taking out your time to check out what I have to say. You know, uh, it's an honor and I'm really, really, really grateful to have so many of you out there listening to this podcast. So, this is episode 100. Uh, we have come a long way. Uh, I remember when I started this podcast uh, about two, three years ago, I had no clear direction. I just wanted to come out and uh, share my knowledge, my experience with people. And I'm glad because from time to time, I get all those uh, feedback, positive feedback uh, from people that listen to this show telling me how uh, the show has impacted them and, and how we are making a difference in their life. So to everyone out there, uh, to those uh, thousands of people that download this show, that listen to this show, I am super, super grateful. And guess what? I, I, I do not have the statistics in front of me right now, but... The last time I checked, uh, this show uh, has been downloaded in over 30 countries all around the world. And uh, in the United States alone, I, I'm, I think we have, we have been downloaded in over uh, more than 40 states in the United States. So I'm super grateful to everyone out there that listen to this show. Let me not keep you waiting for that. I know I'm excited about this milestone. It's a big deal to me uh, to be able to get to episode 100. Uh, it's not easy because um, when you start stuff like this, uh, it's easy to quit. When I look back, maybe uh, looking back and thinking back on the first 10 episodes uh, where then we used to have a couple of uh, maybe 10, Five, 20 people uh, downloaded the shows, you know, uh, I could have given up, but I'm still here, I'm still pressing on, and it's all due to you guys uh, listening to this show. So without further ado, let's get into today's uh, episode. And what I want to talk about today is uh, investing for beginners. I call it a beginner's guide to investing. So when I say investing, I'm going to make it simple. What do I mean? And uh, the way I'm going to define it is that it means setting aside a certain amount of money on a regular basis and putting that money on assets so that it can produce future returns. And that future returns can be in form of growth, and or income. So let me break it down. Let's say uh, you want to go invest in a piece of property. Let's say this is year 2020. You bought the property uh, for $100,000. And uh, you have your tenants. They are going to be paying you rent. After deducting all your expenses, uh, your HOA fees, your maintenance fees, your taxes, let's say you are putting $300 back into your pocket 
So that's income coming in for you. On the other hand, let's say five years from the day you bought the property, that will be 2025. The property has appreciated and now the property is worth $150,000. Guess what? The $50,000 on top of the $100,000 that you initially invested has become your capital gains or what I call the growth that you get from that investment. So you can invest for both growth and income or you can invest for, for growth or income. So when it comes to investing, today I'm going to share four tips to get you started that every beginner must know. The first thing, of course, I'm sure you must have heard this before, is that the earlier, the better. What do I mean by that? Why do I say the earlier, the better? The deal is, the earlier you start investing, the better you are going to be positioned in when it comes to time or for getting back uh, returns on your investments. And this is all due to this thing called the compound interest. What is compound interest? Compound interest is, is an idea of making your money work for you. Let's say another example. You invested $1,000 this year, and that $1,000 produces a 10% uh, return. So that means by the end of the year, uh, your investment has added extra $100. So now you have $1,100. But guess what? You did not uh, cash out the $100 interest. You roll it to year two, the beginning of year two, your investment starts at $1,100. If you are able to generate another 10% returns uh, by the end of the year, you have more money. That's your principal plus interest working for you. And that's the idea of compound interest. So when it comes to the earlier the better, let me give you a straight up analogy. So let's say you are 25 years old today and you open your investment account. Let's say you want to start investing in stocks, mutual funds, and ETFs, right? If you invest $3,000 every year, and you are getting uh, a ROI of 10%, at the end of year two, guess how much you are gonna have? 3,000 every year for two years. Now, nah, it's not gonna be $6,000. Rather, it will be $6,930 in two years. Now, let's uh, say you keep investing in five years. Again, you remain uh, steady. You are still investing that $3,000 every year and you are getting the 10% ROI. By the fifth year, you are not going to have $15,000. Rather, you will have Twenty thousand one hundred and forty-seven, and that's due to the powerful effect of compound interest. Let's say you keep at it, uh, you keep investing. In thirty years, same thirty thousand dollars at ten percent ROI, you are not going to have ninety thousand dollars, but rather you will have five hundred and forty-two thousand. 830 in 30 years. Wow, that's the powerful effect of compounding. And that's what you get by starting early. Now, let's say your cousin uh, waited till maybe he was 50 uh, before he started investing. And at 50, maybe he started investing uh, $5,000 every year. Let's give him the benefit of the doubt. He also uh, gained that 10% ROI. In 10 years, by the time he's turning 60, he will have 87656 What did you notice? He invested more money, but the returns is lower. 
And that's because he waited till he was older before he started investing. And that's why it's always, always, always a great idea to start earlier. So that's why I said the earlier, the better. You must know that the earlier, the better. Every beginner. Now, you may not be able to invest $3,000 every year, and that's okay. Even if it's $1,000 that you can invest, you got to start something. Even if it's $500 only that you can invest, you must start because your money will keep working for you, rain or shine. Number two, get out of debt. Your debt is an obligation to the past and it robs you of the opportunities to invest in future. The way it is is that, let's say you bought something two years ago and you financed it maybe at 10%. You keep paying it and you maybe you have financed it for five years. You keep paying this money for the next uh, three years until you get out of that debt. The money you are using to finance or service that debt, this is money you could have used to build your investment portfolio. So all sort of credit card debt, consumer debt, or any high interest debt, make sure you avoid them. And if you are currently in one, make sure you uh, try all you can to get out of those kind of debt. Um, the way to do it is that let's say you uh, you can get a part-time job do something that will generate uh, side income for you so that you can uh, use the money that you are getting from this side income to quickly pay down your debt so that's the number two thing you need to get out of debt as quickly as possible number three you need to save for emergency Emergency do happen, unfortunately. Roofs will leak, tires will bust, electronics will pack up, your own appliances, your fan can break down, your microwave can break down. So you've got to be prepared for this emergency so that you can take care of them when they come. Notice that I say when they come, not if they come. So you have to be ready. And the rule of thumb is to save 6 to 12 months of your monthly living expenses for emergency. So that when all these things uh, break down, when you have to repair anything at home or your car has an issue, it will not be a burden uh, to you. You have the money to take care of those things and you can keep moving forward with your life. So save for emergency that's the number three thing now number four you need to pick your assets you need to determine the type of investment that you want to put your money into you can invest in stock in the stock market like i said you can go into real estate you can invest uh, in businesses you can buy up a business but uh, the good thing is you can do the combination of all these things well, the best idea, the best way to handle it is you need to learn about what you are investing so you have some knowledge uh, around what you are putting your money into. Because investment does not always guarantee that you are going to get that future return that I talked about. And now it is your duty to ensure that you do your due diligence before you put your money into any type of investment. Because really, businesses do fail. Real estate, yeah, your tenants may leave, but yeah, you, you say you get another one. That's true. But the period, uh, the, the period during which you uh, lost your tenants, uh, if you don't take care, you'll be uh, losing money. So uh, stock markets, uh, they do crash from time to time as well. So make sure you uh, study and understand the type of asset that you are putting your money into before you actually uh, dole out your hard-earned money. I like the stock market and I highly recommend it as part of everyone's investment portfolio. 
And the way I see it is that if you look at a well-run company, when I'm talking about this, I mean companies like Apple, Google, Microsoft, banks like JP Morgan Chase, Bank of America, Walmart, Target. These companies, they have talented people running them. Yes, I may not be able to start uh, such businesses, but I can become a part owner of these great businesses by investing my money into them. So look for uh, well-run companies, put your money into them, and uh, you'll be able to get returns, returns in terms of dividend or capital appreciation. Uh, that's uh, the way to make money from the stock market. Uh, I spoke about single stock just now. They can be very, very risky. Uh, I just said uh, Apple. Apple, maybe some, uh, I hope they keep doing well because I like the company. But they can have issues. They can run into financial mess if maybe they have wrong people leading the company and the company may collapse. A great example would be companies like Blockbusters, uh, the company collapsed. Uh, General Electric used to be the darling of Wall Street. Uh, today, uh, they are struggling. They cut their dividend to a penny. You know, their stock price went from as around 60 bucks to as low as $6. So, investment is risky, my friend. That's what I'm saying. But that doesn't mean you shouldn't invest. Because if you keep all your money under the pillow, you are not going to get any returns and you are not making your money work for you. And the way to counter this or the way to protect yourself is to diversify. You can diversify uh, in the stock market. You can uh, buy a fund that's mutual fund or ETFs that track the broader market, maybe S&P or something that track the Dow Jones or the Nasdaq as an example. This way, if one company goes down, it's not going to pull air, all the companies in that, uh, in that fund down. So you will possibly not even notice the effect of one or two companies underperforming because you are invested in over 500 companies. So diversification can help you to protect against uh, the risk of loss of your capital. And that's where I'm ending it today. I uh, spoke about the beginner's guide to investing. I said the earlier you start, the better. I inform you to get out. I said it's always good to get out of debt, all those high interest debts, because they will deny you the uh, opportunities to invest in future. I, I said it's always good to uh, save for emergency. The recommendation is to save uh, for about six to 12 months of your monthly living expenses. And the fourth thing is you need to pick your assets. You have worked really hard. It is reasonable to make your money work harder for you. The best way to achieve that is by investing your money into assets that will appreciate in value with time and assets that produces income. According to Warren Buffett, if you cannot find a way to make money work for you, you will need to work for the rest of your life. You deserve better, my friend. And because of you, I wrote a three series book to educate people about the topic of financial management. The first one was Power to Earn. This book was about how people can earn as much money as they desire. Uh, the next one, the second book in the series is Power to Save. And the purpose is to educate people about ways and ideas to save money. And the last, uh, the third book in the series is Power to Invest. This is now about how to deploy your money so that your money will work hard for you to produce uh, growth and returns. Check these books out on Amazon. And I hope you found this episode beneficial. Till next time again, this is Bola Alabi. Now, going. 
This episode of Winner's Ways podcast has come to a close. We hope you enjoy and learn something from today's show. We want you to win and excel in all areas of your life. And we regularly explore and share information with our listeners to empower them to win. Be sure to subscribe to our podcast for more tips and strategies to help you find the success that you've always dreamt of. And don't forget to rate and review so that we can continue to bring you more podcast episodes to empower you. We will love to have you again next week. Now, keep winning. Keep winning.